Before we jump into the video, I want to point out that the first few tutorials are going to be on Religion 4. And then after part, let's see here. Once we hit part 4, we convert our project to Religion 5. And then we continue on through so in the last video. using Unreligion 5. So what we're going to do is start out, like I said, with the Unreligion 4 project. And then I show you, and we convert to Unreligion 5, creating a copy of the project. However, if you want to just start with Unreligion 5, that's perfectly fine. Or if you want to stick with Unreligion 4, again, perfectly fine. They both are going to be working essentially in the exact same way. So you really don't have to make any changes between the two. The only differences you're going to notice are going to be in correlation to the actual user interface. So I just want to give you a heads up and let's jump right back into the video. In this video, we're going to go through and begin working on our inventory as well as we are going to in the future anyways, once we get the inventory set up, make a basic shop system so that way we can purchase, sell, and all that kind of stuff, items from our inventory and receive them to our inventory when we purchase. So what I have here is the default third person project. So go ahead and create one of those. The name of it is the inventory shop tutorial and we can begin. So, whoops, did not mean to delete the floor. We're mostly just gonna jump right on in. And the only thing I have done is I have disabled the VR plugins just to stop that annoying crap from popping up every time I launch the project. And let's see. It's pretty much everything for setup. So let's go ahead and open up our character.cpp and .h. And what I want to jump right on into doing is first off, I want to remove the VR related stuff. So I'm going to remove reset VR, touch started and touch stopped. And I believe that is it for that project. So let's scroll down to the input bindings right here. Remove those from setup player input. Remove the on reset VR, touch started and touch stopped functions. And we should be good to go. Just going to clean up some of these comments that I don't really care about. Remove the include for the head mounted display. And we are done. So what I want to do is I want to make a basic interact function that's going to be kind of the baseline for, well, interacting. I'm going to create a new function here called void interact and create the implementation of it and I'm going to move it right below our setup player input component so in here I'm going to go ahead and bind an action so I'm just going to copy this one for jump paste it in and change jump to interact and change the function that it calls to be our interact function as well so that way whenever we press a key in game we're going to have to bind this up though to a key we can Pretty much interactive stuff so i want to send out a line trace and whatever i hit i want to get that item and just simply print it out so we're going to go ahead and create our line trace so we need a starting location and an end location for that line to go and parse through so we're going to create an f vector for the start and that's going to be our camera so here we have the camera boom and our follow camera so we're going to use the follow camera get component location then we want an endpoint, so f vector end. And that's going to be start plus our follow camera. We want to get the forward vector. And we want to simply multiply it by the length of which we want the line trace to be. So if it's going from our camera, it's going to be starting from behind our character. So it has to go from about here all the way out in front of our character somewhere. So I'm going to assume We'll start with 500 as the length. So that's 500 centimeters. Then we need an F hit result. We store, obviously, the hit result. And then we can do our line trace. So if get world line trace single by channel. And here we have our parameters. So I'm wrapping this in an if statement because this function, as you can see, it returns a Boolean here and it returns the let's see it doesn't show me where well it basically returns true or false based upon if a blocking hit was found that's why we're wrapping it in the if statement so if this is true then guess what we have a blocking hit so the first parameter once it comes up 
is the hit result. So go ahead and get out our hit result, pass in our start and our end. And then we have our collision channel. So we can see the collision channels by doing E, collision channel, colon, colon. And we can see the huge list of enums here. Or we can just do ECC underscore. And I'm just going to do the visibility channel. And then next up is the F collision query params. So we want to create that. So F collision query params. I just always call mine params. Then we want to do params dot and search through the functions. So this one contains add ignored actor, which we want to use because we want to ignore ourselves. So we're going to pass in this. So we're essentially passing in our own character to be ignored. That way, whenever we send our line trace, because it's coming from behind the character like this, it's going straight out in front of us, we are going to hit our character. We're going to hit the mesh, the capsule, everything in it. So we don't want to trigger that hit. We want to completely ignore it. So then we can just pass in params. And we are done. So inside of here, we can simply print out the, well, the hit actor. So if a actor, actor equals hit result dot get actor. We can print out a log. So you be log, log temp, warning, text, hit actor. We can do percent s to print out a string. We're going to dereference actor, get name. So we're going to just simply print out the actor that we hit. We're going to print out the name of it. So let's go ahead and close down the editor and recompile and relaunch. Okay, once we've done that, we want to come up here to settings, project settings, go to input, action mappings. We're going to just replace reset VR with interact and change. I'm just going to get rid of all these inputs here and change the key to, I'll do the E key. So I'm going to select E, close it, and save all. So now press play, I press E and look down, we hit the floor. I look in front of this and I hit the cube. Press E, we hit the cube. We can spam E and we're just hitting whatever we are looking at. So the only downside is we do not have a really a way to see what we're looking at. So we need a crosshair as well as I want to offset the camera a bit. So let's open up our third person character blueprint and just simply offset the camera. So here's our camera and there's our camera boom. We can take our camera boom and offset it to the right by about 50 units. Now we have that offset. Let's go a little bit farther. Like so. And I'd say that's decent. Now the other thing we can do is I'm actually kind of curious. So we're at 70. Let's reset that to zero. What happens if we move just the camera? Does it change the angle of anything? No, it gives us about the same result. So we're just going to set our camera boom to be moved over by 70 units. Let's go just a tiny bit farther. We'll go 75 and save. So this way we can see pretty much whatever we want to hit. Okay, so that there is something I am not a fan of. So when we did that little spin, that is a problem. So let's reset that to zero and just change the follow camera instead to be moved over by 75 units, not the camera boom, and try it. And there we go. So that got rid of that issue. So we just want to move just the camera, not the camera boom. Okay, so next up, we just want a basic crosshair. So this is obviously going to be kind of temporary, but we just want to be able to see, you know, roughly what we're able to look at. So I'm going to create a new folder and call it widgets because we're going to have one for our inventory. Open that up user interface, widget blueprint, and call it w underscore crosshair. Open that up. And all it's going to be is two simple images. So I'm just going to drag and drop one in, anchor it to the center, reset the location for X and Y, set the size for the X. Let's just scale that. And we'll scale it to 250 and 10. Might be a little too thick. Let's do five. All right. And we want to make it dead center. Let's do 0 0.5 on the X. 
and 0 0.5 on the Y, so it's dead in the center, and change the color and opacity to be red. Once that's done, let's control C, control V, so we can paste down another one, right like that. Reset position again, and change the X and Y size. So we're gonna do five for the Y, or for the X, and 50 for the Y, so that way it looks vertical. And simply compile and save. Now we can be lazy and just do this in Blueprint. So we're going to do create widget inside of our third person character. We're going to select our crosshair and simply add it to the viewport. So there we have our crosshair of exactly where we're looking at. So I look at this. Press E. We're in the cube. Press E now. I'm just a little bit off. I hit the floor. I hit the cube. So it's going right to wherever the crosshair is. So I feel like I offset the camera a little bit too much. So I'm going to actually drag it back to something like 60. And let's actually increase it a bit. Let's try going up by 40 units. And I'd say that's a bit better in terms of where we can kind of aim and hit stuff at. So we have our camera at 60 on the Y and 40 on the Z. We have our little crosshair so we can see what we're aiming at when we try to hit. And we are good to go. So now that we have the basics for interacting, we can go through and create our item class that we will be used to, well, work with our inventory and work for the shop system. So we're going to create our item class. We're going to have an interface for interacting with said item. And uh, yeah, we're just going to kind of expand off from there. So that's going to be all for this video. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's linked down below. And if you want to support me, you can find like my Patreon down in the description below as well, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons, as well as you get early access to nearly every single video that I make, including ones like this. So I'll see you in the next video.